Hey folks, Sega Sonic fan here with another video doing some Weller soldering iron station upgrades. And uh, I'm going to go over a couple upgrades I've done to these over the years. I've had this sucker, if you can believe this, this WESD51 for almost 20 years. And boy, does it show. This thing is beat up, but it's got some sentimental value. I've fixed so many things with it. And even though there might be some better options out there, in fact, I'm pretty sure there are, TS-80 and TS-100 looking at you, um, these uh, are workhorses. The Wellers are German-made workhorses, and they do the job. So, uh, you know, I keep these going. Uh, but one of the chief complaints I have, in fact, the chief complaint, aside from the PES-51 irons needing to be replaced more often than they should because of the uh, the cable gets damaged here in the joint. Um, it doesn't have the greatest strain relief. That's probably my chief my chief complaint. But second complaint is the kind of rattling noise that the transformer makes. Uh, I looked this up and it says uh, on the internet here the main cause of transformer noise is magnetostriction effect. Well, there you go, kids magnetostriction effect and uh, according to what I'm reading here it says this is on uh, dfliq.net if you're interested this is where the dimensions of ferromagnetic material change upon contact with a magnetic field so uh, the magnetic field that's generated by the winds of coil in here interacts with this magnetic material and Essentially, these plates, I believe, is what is actually vibrating ever so slightly. And uh, Weller did not take any of this into account in any revision of any of these, as far as I could tell. And you might say, well, I never hear it. Well, lucky you. If you don't hear it and you're happy with your soldering iron, then far be it from me to take you away from your soldering bliss. But for those of us that solder in quiet conditions for many hours, the very gentle rattling of this transformer can drive us mad. And so I have sought a number of ways to rectify this 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 ill this ill begotten situation, and uh, with some varying degrees of success. I, I talked about it in a previous video a while back, um, which I don't believe was very high quality, and I don't know how many people watched that. But uh, one of the things I did first off was to insulate, create some dampening within the shell itself. Now, of course, you want to make sure these heat vents aren't blocked. Does this thing generate that much heat? Well, not in my climate. It's not too much of a problem. Um, but, you know, something to keep in mind. Um, if you're working at room temperature, it hasn't really been an issue for me. You know, 22 degrees Celsius, uh, 60, what is that, 65, 68 Fahrenheit. Uh, but you can do a little bit of dampening in the enclosure, in the top enclosure can help. And, um, and then uh, the thing that I've also found is actually quite helpful is doing some dampening under the material itself. Now I'm going to try a, 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 a thing where I can actually just screw into these. But what I had previously done to fix it when I was super desperate, and this is kind of dangerous, is I actually unscrewed the, the transformer entirely. I used zip ties to lock down the grounding cables uh, securely. And then I, li I literally just rested it on these pads. Um, I don't know if that's a thing to do. It seems kind of dangerous. Uh, so I'm going to try, I'm, I'm revisiting this since I, I wanted to go up and just kind of give it a little bit of TLC. Uh, but yeah, I'm actually actually just, you know, I'm drilling through to these pads. Now you want to be very careful with these screws, or at least, you know, I need to be very careful because the threading on the posts has just gone to crap over the, over the decades. Um, and so, you know, maybe be a little bit gentle, the plastic's Especially, especially if you've had yours for a long time and the plastic's getting really old, like mine. Um, I sure wish they were they were metal threaded um, standoffs. Maybe maybe I'll add something like that. I don't know. I'm trying to decide how much work to put into this. What I am thinking of doing though is actually uh, based off a video I saw using some JB Weld or whatever kind of epoxy uh, that works with plastics and filling that joint with the screw here that's kind of loose and then re-tapping it with some Teflon tape on uh, on the threaded screw. And apparently that's a way to re-thread uh, plastic standoffs, which is pretty cool. Um, that's for another time. Uh, what else am I gonna talk about? Well, 
Um, I had uh, a fuse. This is a resettable fuse that blew up um, some time ago, and I replaced that. I'm just going over the repairs and such that I've done, and uh, those fuse can be gotten at the uh, various outlets. Uh, I believe. I guess it's. I, I guess what I ended up getting was a 0.2 amp, 30 volt, 0.4 ohm. Uh, it's been a long time since I replaced that, so I don't even know how I came to that conclusion, but uh, I probably did parts research on the, the fuse that was in there. Anyway, that works That works fine. It has worked fine for many years, so I'm not too concerned about it. And if you're interested, the part number is right there, MF-MSMF020-2. Um, and, uh, and the other part that I've had to replace over the years is the trimmer resistor, uh, which is a 2.5 kilo ohm, 15 millimeter round. Um, it's a uh, Pfeiffer, whatever that name is. I forget the name of the manufacturer. It's a very common manufacturer. But uh, there's a part number, PT15NH06-252A2020-S. And uh, from memory serves, these were perfect replacements for your potentiometer in here, um, which might actually be configured as a rheostat. And then uh, the, uh, God, I feel like, I don't know, I, I have such a, I have mixed feelings about the the, the quality of, of this soldering station. I mean, in, in some respects, it's just an absolute workhorse. It's absolutely awesome. In other respects, like the person who did the case design was just, I don't know, man, out to lunch. Um, because they use these little tiny, poorly threaded wood screws to uh, mount the circuit board to the case and it's only there's only two screws i think everywhere else it's just like plastic that it's supposed to rest on it's it's really janky to be frank um and uh these screws become unthreaded just so easily i mean you can see the threads are not very coarse and they're very small uh what i have found works is uh m3s which are a little a little larger a little more coarse at a six millimeter depth and i got those uh in this great little M3 wood screw kit. So it's the ones right here in the bottom left corner. Um, you will have to re-tap the plastic. So there is, you know, there is some changes to make if you're uncomfortable with that. But I do find this actually stays in now and it feels a lot more secure. Um, if you really wanted to, you could explore options of actually, you know, having a nut and a bolt that goes all the way through. But uh, I don't need to do that just yet. And uh, lastly, I believe this is lastly, my favorite upgrade to these is getting rid of the uh, not so hot knob, which I guess works, but it, it's got a lot of surface friction around this outer diameter uh, against the plastic here. And it, it, I don't know, it just feels cheap. It's really hollow. It doesn't have, it doesn't feel that precise. And you know, it's not, it's not a make it or break it kind of thing, but if you want something a little bit nicer, you can get yourself a really nice aluminum knob and then get uh, one of the uh, clip-in shafts for those uh, rotary potentiometers. Uh, not rotary potentiometers, sorry, just those regular uh, trimmer potentiometers. And uh, these, I haven't gotten an exact part uh, for this just yet. I got this years ago and I don't, I don't have the uh, location, I don't have the, the part number on hand. Um, but if you, if you look around, um, they generally are only sold on Mauser for some reason um, for this particular brand. I believe it's P-I-F-E-R, something like that. Um, and then, yeah, just make sure you get a, uh, I think it's a, a knurled shaft, however it's pronounced, K-N-U-R-L-E-D. And uh, you just get a matching one. Um, this is just pulled from some random e-waste, but... Um, you know, you can find lots of aluminum, nice aluminum knobs. Anyway, once you do that, um, this is that's my favorite upgrade because if you see my other one over here, the uh, let it start up here. It's just it's very very precise now, and the turns feel just really tight, and uh, it feels really good. Um, the the uh, bu -bu 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 the disadvantage is you have uh, you don't have the angular support. So if you feel like you're the kind of person that's gonna knock this somehow, I don't know how, maybe you're just really rough with your soldering stations, but uh, you could potentially damage that uh, that trimmer pot in there. But uh, I don't think I've done that. 
after this install, after years, it's been no problem for me. Um, just something to keep in mind. I mean, do, you do have that screw support, but yeah, you would you would still probably damage that rheostat uh, trimmer potentiometer if you if you really if you really hit that really hard or something, because this this original stock knob adds kind of more of an angular support. But eh, that's a really unlikely scenario and absolutely worth the trade-off of greater precision and control when I'm adjusting temperature doing my work. So um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna look into uh, actually getting some dampening material that's like comes in like square strips that I can cut and kind of more evenly distribute along the whole case. I think that's gonna make a big difference. And uh, and then I'm also gonna look into a little more maybe purchasing some more of these rubber feet. These are kind of old. Um, and I think with those two combined, uh, and of course using the rubber feet on the bottom, um, sometimes those get lost. If they do, you can also use uh, door, like weather stripping stuff, like this kind of stuff. Um, and you can put this on the bottom of the soldering station, and that will also create a dampening factor. And so the idea of course is you're dampening not just the transformer, but you're dampening the cavity that's resonating around the transformer, and you're, you're dampening the soldering station itself, which could be resonating on a table, if you have a hard table surface, which you most likely do. And the rubber feet are, of course, meant to help with some of that, but I, I find that they're not amazing at, at dampening the stock rubber feet. So uh, yeah, that said, uh, you know, there's a little bit of TLC I've had to put in these over the years, but you know, 20 years is a pretty long time to be soldering with the same soldering station. And, um, Boy, have I fixed a lot of things with it. Oh, one other side note, by the way, this is a very strange thing about this soldering station that some people might not know about. Um, there's actually a, uh, a reed switch, like a reed magnetic sensor um, on the circuit board on this side right here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, such a weird thing. Uh, it's right over, right over here. And so if you wanna change the uh, temperature from being locked to Fahrenheit or Celsius, you're actually supposed to use the tip of your iron and turn it on and then there's some there's some setup thing you have to do uh, to change modes. Why they did that instead of just a button? <laughs> oh my God, I don't know. It's very odd, but um, they did. That's a decision they made. And as you can see here, when I was trying to figure it out years ago, I actually melted some of the plastic. Um, anyway, I also need to go in here and fix, uh, see why it's, uh, not flat against the plastic here. This this plastic's just so old, man. It's, it's hanging on by a thread, but I'm determined to get more life out of this sucker. It's good stuff. Hope this video was useful to you. It's great hearing from folks if you want to comment anything about the transformer noise, if you know more about that kind of stuff, other, other solutions that have worked for you. I don't care if you like, I don't care if you subscribe. I make these videos for fun and to support people and the community that has supported me. That's it for this one. This is Sega Sonic Fan, signing out.